Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Becca Dilham, neurologist from Morocco. Today I'm excited to dive into a topic that's close to my heart, consciousness. Before we begin, I'd like to define the aim and audience of my content. This channel is directed towards individuals passionate about neuroscience, offering practical approach to understanding common aspects of our lives through the lens of the brain and neuroscience. These topics may include, but aren't limited to, diet, exercise, addictions, sleep, focus, meditation, mental and hormonal health. It is important to note that this podcast is distinct from my work as a neurologist. Its primary goal is to share updates and insights on these interesting topics. Without further suspense, let's dive in. What do we really know about consciousness? One might ask, why bother learning about these challenging and seemingly distant concepts? Well, the answers may differ based on our worldviews, our backgrounds, and whether we aim to find meaning in our lives. Sounds like the beginning of a philosophical essay, doesn't it? Nonetheless, there are potentially many advantages in doing so. I believe that understanding how we function could help us optimize our actions, allowing us to reach our goals more efficiently. Is there a single definition of consciousness that everyone agrees upon? The answer is no. According to many neuroscientists, consciousness is a biological capacity that has evolved to provide us with a more sophisticated understanding of the world. Our perceptions and feelings represent a continuous reflection of our environment and our place within it. The brain subconsciously processes both external and internal information, engaging in incredibly complex calculations, and only becomes conscious of the final outcome. This definition aligns with Giulio Stannoni's Integrated Information Theory, which stands as one of the prominent theories concerning consciousness. Integrated information theory proposes that consciousness emerges from the integration of information within a complex network of interconnected elements. However, Philip Goff, a respected philosopher at Durham's university, known for his work on consciousness, has expressed disappointment, stating that the science of consciousness has not lived up to expectations. In fact, the 25-year bet between neuroscientist Christoph Koch and philosopher David Chalmers, forecasting resolution to the science of consciousness, ended with neuroscience conceding to philosophy. Despite years of exploration, consensus on consciousness remains elusive, with numerous competing theories striving for recognition. Can we locate consciousness? Do we know how it functions? On a functional level, brain activity plays a pivotal role in determining our consciousness of information. For instance, consider brain activity when perceiving an object. Primitive cortical activity located in the occipital cortex allows us to recognize the object's shape subconsciously, a process taking roughly 200 milliseconds. At the opposite, conscious awareness of the object involves broader brain activity, as seen in this image, revealing activity in areas beyond the occipital cortex, such as the frontal and parietal cortex. It takes an additional 100 milliseconds for us to become aware of specific aspects, such as recognizing the image as a number 2 or the letter Z. This widespread cerebral connectivity is considered the neurological hallmark of consciousness. Let's conduct a quick test to illustrate how consciousness filters out peripheral or irrelevant data. Fixate your gaze on the central white dot over time, you might notice the peripheral yellow dots intermittently disappearing and reappearing. These dots could relate to vessels in your peripheral retina, remain a constant image, but lack the relevance to enter your conscious perception. Is the onset of consciousness known? In infants, it takes notably longer, around three to four times more to activate the aforementioned brain areas required for consciousness in adults. On an electrical level, the characteristic wave pattern associated with consciousness emerges in toddlers around the age of five months. Does consciousness of external objects or events imply self-consciousness? 
The mirror experiments of the Rouge test established in the 1970s investigated the transition from unconscious to conscious self-awareness. From the age of two, a child can recognize a red spot on their face while observing themselves in a mirror, signifying the psychological hallmark of self-awareness. What does psychology reveal about consciousness? Psychologically, consciousness refers to our capacity to mentally represent the world and our place within it. In simpler terms, it is the narrative we create about our life experiences and the meanings we attribute to them. This perspective leads to further questions. If our life experiences are shaped by our perceptions and representations of the world, can we truly define reality or is it only our perception of it? This profound question may lead to future discussions in Range Woods. So for this, stay tuned, activate the notification bell and subscribe to my channel. Do animals possess consciousness? What about other living creatures? Philosopher René Descartes asserted that only humans possess consciousness, associating it with rationality, which he believed correlated with sophisticated language. In contrast, Darwin proposed that animals might possess consciousness, citing their ability to select mates based on beauty criteria as evidence. He suggested that this ability indicated a key aspect of consciousness. However, this indicator has not been proof of consciousness. Similar to tests conducted on humans, the mirror test has been used by neuroscientists to assess correlations between sensory recognition and consciousness in animals. It involves marking an animal and observing if it recognizes and reacts to the mark in a mirror. Some species like dogs, dolphins, pigs, and elephants have successfully passed this test, while others have not. Yet, this hasn't been definitive proof of their consciousness. Evolution biologist Siva Yablanka proposed five criteria to identify consciousness in living creatures. The first criterion is related to the ability to perceive external objects or events as individual units and parts that can form other units for comparison. The second is a display of voluntary or goal-oriented actions. The third is the capacity to create mental representations or environment maps to perceive and respond to events. The fourth is linked to the position of a flexible value system, where behavior varies based on different environments. The fifth and last criterion relies on the position of a sense of self or the ability to distinguish between the body and the external world. Upon examining chimpanzees, mice, and flies, it was observed that they did not fulfill all the five criteria but they exhibited some variant between species. This suggests that animals and other species may possess at least some form of consciousness. Could the differences in consciousness among various species be attributed to anatomical disparities in the brain? On an anatomical level, while the human brain and mammalian brains share many similarities in basic structure and function, there are notable differences worth exploring. Here are the most known. The human brain is relatively larger in proportion to body size compared to most other mammals. Responsible for higher cognitive functions, the human neocortex is highly developed and expanded compared to other mammals, facilitating reasoning, problem solving, language, and consciousness. The prefrontal cortex associated with executive functions, decision making, and social behavior is proportionally larger and more intricate in humans than any other mammal. The human hippocampus is relatively larger and more complex compared to many other mammals. It is critical for memory and spatial navigation. Areas like Broca's and Veronica's areas, integral for language, production, and comprehension, are distinct to the human brain. These differences in brain anatomy suggests that our brains enhance complexity in certain regions, like the neocortex, prefrontal cortex, and specialized language areas, might account for the variations observed in consciousness and cognitive abilities.
Can we actively alter or change our states of consciousness? Numerous practices are known to induce alterations in consciousness. Familiar methods include meditation and the use of psychedelics. Additionally, practices like drumming, rhythmic music, especially in shamanic journeying, specific breathing techniques, hypnosis, lucid dreaming, fasting, sensory deprivation tanks, biofeedback and more, all have the potential to modify consciousness. The mechanisms behind these alterations are diverse and complex, often requiring individual explanations. Understanding consciousness is still in its early stage, but experiments and theories discussed in this podcast pave the way for further exploration. I don't know about you, but for me, these insights on consciousness and its understanding have given rise to more questions in my mind, such as, do animals have a more primitive consciousness than we do? Or are we simply in the first stages of our understanding? If so, what could be the discriminative factor between our consciousness and theirs? Is it the fact that from an evolution standpoint, we fulfill all the criteria and they don't? Are these criteria actually sufficient to explain the phenomena of consciousness? Do the animals or living creatures ask themselves these types of questions? If so, can we suppose that given the fact that some of the species are physically stronger than we are, they would more likely be in the top of the food chain? Is it simply our ability to have a more complex sense of self, such as asking ourselves existential, philosophical and metaphysical questions? These questions and many more impose themselves we really want to come up with the right answers in the future. This said, I'm wondering what are your thoughts on this topic? Please don't miss the chance to let me know in the comments below. I would also be glad if you shared your ideas for my upcoming content of Brain Truths. And don't forget to like and share this video. And of course, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you won't miss any of the upcoming content released. Before you leave, here is a teaser for the next episode. The next episode is going to be a hotspot episode on which I'm going to discuss one of the practices that change the states of consciousness. Want to guess which one it is?